Hey YouTube, this is Julius here with another video, a local realtor here in Virginia. I just want to give you guys a quick video on what type of documents that you may need when getting that pre-approval letter um, through the mortgage lender that you're going through. from lender to lender. Um, so this is just a general list of things that you might have want to gather before going ahead and getting that pre-approval letter started or whatnot, um, just so it can flow easy and you know, you'll know you just go through this whole real estate process with a breeze. Um, so <clears throat> the number one document that you would like to, you know, most lenders would like to see is your social security cards. Uh, having your social security card uh, on hand or whatnot is always good. Uh, some lenders require it, some don't, but it's always, they'll definitely require your social security number either or. Um, some, some banks, um, if you already bank with them and you're applying for a mortgage or whatnot, usually they already have this information on file, so usually you just have to type it in to get that um, pre-approval letter started. Number two is proof of employment. So including a list of employers for the past two years, they want to see that work history that you have. Usually if you just started working or whatnot, some lenders do accept that, but you know, sometimes they want to see that you have some longevity in your jobs or, you know, work history. Um, so just having a list of those, you know, simply pull up your resume or whatnot, you know, and just have that information and that proof that, you know, you actually work there. Number so, three, proof of income. So they really want to see that you're basically um, having some income come in. So, you know, if you know you don't have any income to come in, then they're like, man, if I'm going to give this guy a $300,000 mortgage, how is he going to pay it? So that's that's one of the, you know, that's, that's definitely one of the, um, you know, things that they're looking for, of course. You know, I'm not a lender myself. However, just being around, um, you know, people getting pre-approval letters and, you know, obtaining these letters and whatnot, usually um, these are the uh, sort of things that they look for. Number four, tax documents. So with tax documents, you have, um, you know, your different W-2s or federal tax returns. You know, that's what they're, you know, usually some lenders are looking for that just so that they can have an extra proof of you obtaining some money or whatnot. So the next one is a place of residence. So they want you to provide addresses and you know different landlords and things like that for the past two years. Usually most lenders might require more history or whatnot, but usually typically when applying for a mortgage, they're really just looking for that last pa or the past two years of your of where you lived and whatnot, and it's having that information of past landlords. Um, you know, rent history or whatnot. The next thing that they usually look for is bank statements. So for your checkings, your savings, your money market accounts, usually they're looking for that just so that they can have extra. So if you had any like uh, overdraft fees or whatnot or anything like that, um, you know, they're just checking that. And usually if that does occur, usually you just write a small note just saying, hey, this is what happened that day, or this is what happened, this is what I was going through, or whatnot. Sometimes they ask you to explain it, sometimes they don't, but that's a, another thing that you wanna look for in you know, obtaining and whatnot is your bank statements. And none of these you know, necessarily disqualify you or anything like that from a mortgage. You know, Every situation is different, so that's why you definitely should talk to a licensed lender. Um, so um, you know, that's, that's very important. And that's one of the first things you want to start looking for when um, you know looking and, and searching for a home. So the next thing they look for is the documents from outstanding debts or whatnot. So student loans, credit cards, you know, um, car payments or whatnot. Usually they ask for some some documentation or whatnot um, in regards to your your debts and what you're paying and whatnot, just so they can really see. Um, your debt to income ratio. So basically your DTI is the how much your overall debt is to your your income coming in and what percentage that is. 
So usually you can check this, you know, on an online calculator or whatnot. But however, that's one of the things that most lenders are looking for when they're giving you any type of loan. Um, so the next thing, if you're receiving any gifts for like the deposit or any down payment or whatnot of any t of any loan, they're going to be asking you about um, you know documentation for that gift um, from that family member or whatnot, um, which is not a loan. So they're going to specifically ask you, is this a loan or is this a gift? You know what I mean? And usually um, some loans allow you to have those gift funds. Um, but if you if, if it was another loan, basically that's another debt that you're owing someone. So usually they don't want to see that. They want either see a gift from like a family member or whatnot, you know, um, and them explaining that it's just a gift, not a loan. So if you're looking to borrow money for somebody, you know, never rely on any lending applications or anything like that. But just make sure that, you know, you and that person know that it's a gift and that it actually is a gift, you know. So, um, so overall, you know, just um, always, you know, usually um, having more documentation is better than no documentation, um, you know, when getting pre-approval letters and then also the loan. Um, you don't want to just, you know, lie on your pre-approval um you know application just to get that pre-approval letter because they actually look more in depth um you know say you get an offer accepted on a home um you have to go through that loan process where you have to submit all these documents or whatnot to a loan officer and then they have to approve them and verify them and whatnot and go through this whole process before they can actually sign the loan over and then the deed can be transferred and the funds transferred and everything like that so you don't want to lie and 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 uh, basically get a loan that you can't afford and then that you may not get approved for at the end of the day.